We are back in the Severance world. We are innies, we are outies, we see goats, and spoilers up ahead. Hey everybody, welcome back to Ask Start with Nick and John. So, more comments, more conversations. Definitely, as you're listening to this, drop your comments down below and we'll probably be continuing this, this conversation over the coming weeks and months as we very much look forward to season two, which supposedly is already finished filming. So we're mm-hmm. looking forward to that coming out, hopefully in the not so distant upcoming future. Yeah. All right. So shall we just jump on in? Um, the comments just or? so you guys know, we cover other shows on HBO Max to Apple and we're, we have a poll going right now for future shows too. So check out our poll section. We're still getting some great show options and stuff like that. Me and John are also thinking about covering some other upcoming shows. So subscribe so you can get all the updates. All right, so Kieran, I believe, always throw out this disclaimer, if I butcher names, I apologize, but I believe this is Kieran Mullen. I think Miss Casey is in a coma. I think Irving was in a coma, then they Mm. chipped him. But when he recovered, he was able to leave as an Audi, but remain as a worker. These are the people who never leave. Their work selves only come from the dark elevator because their body doesn't work without the chip. So that's an interesting thing I hadn't really thought is, what if they're... Life is only their any life, I guess. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because Irving's Audi life isn't too crazy or like um, it doesn't look <laughs> like he does a lot. He just looks like he reminences on on painting memories of his any life. <laughs> so there's definitely something going on because he even has a map, a list of people's names. So, you know, he's been thinking about this for a while. I mean, obviously we haven't. We, we got one good episode of their outside Audi lives. And we haven't gotten too many glimpses beyond that. And the assumption, well, actually I can't even say it's an assumption season two, we might be back in the, you know, any world again. And it might be more of that. I mean, we always got some outside life, but it was mostly, you know, Mark and then, mm. you know, not much else. So it's going to be curious to see how they're going to approach this. I mean, this is, they're completely different shows, but you had Westworld season one versus season two versus yeah. season three. They were completely different stories. And I'm curious if these stories are going to completely evolve in season two, or they're mm. going to try and go back to the formula a little bit. It's tricky because if you find something that works, how much do you want to change it? Do you want to keep it evolving or do you not want to alienate your existing fan base? So it's going to yeah. be curious to see how they're going to approach that. But yeah, it's that's interesting because we have no idea. That's one of the biggest fun questions that i've had is like so what goes on down that elevator i thought they were already as low as it goes i thought they were already doing the was it when you go under the little oh know, limbo. The limbo hello limbo. yeah i was go. like yeah i was hello, like i thought they already was <laughs> oh there goes nick i thought they had already gone as low as like the elevators <laughs> went and then no there's more like, like are they going to hell like is that the, the elevator, elevator to down. hell yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know we'll see kind of what happens here but that, that's definitely an interesting thought is like hey you know mark's wife is she still a functional, regular outside person or is she just existing in this, you know, inner world now? So, yeah. It's very interesting too because maybe there's other characters who have been chipped too and they're just a different version or a chip. Like maybe, mm-hmm. we don't know. We don't know. And there's a lot of questions that hopefully they're going to answer. <laughs> we almost made my spit my drink <laughs> everywhere. That's, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so Fred, I'll just do it. Fred Nunziata, if I got that right, give me a thumbs up because that would be awesome. I'm giving right, you so, one just for trying, John. Oh, well, thank you. I wasn't talking to you, but okay, thank you. It's like the end All of right, the so, Azart video. It's like. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and next to So Fred was saying, well, this day just got a little bit better. Thanks, you three. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you're very welcome. I'm like, Unfortunately, down now for the immediate future, we're down to two now because uh, Kyle is on an amazing life adventure, yes. like a hobbit leaving the Shire. He's yeah. on a life adventure, but uh, With we will no definitely Sam. be here. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't Kyle's need to discuss. really tall, so he's like our Gandalf. Oh, it's you know? true. But anyway, yeah, he is our wizard, yeah, our expert wizard. We are, we are, yeah, he's like, he's a wizard. He knows things. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're completely glad that uh, we can all your day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. TDT, oh, so something TD Tekken 6 says, mm. I think the reason the show let the viewers see the parking lot of Lumen, and this is this is a fun comment. I read this one before. 
uh, in, in the common threads is, I think the reason the show let the viewers see the parking lot of Lumen throughout the season is to make us think there are more people working for Lumen or involved with Lumen than we've been showing so far. And then there's a question mark, so it's a question. Mm. One moment the parking lot is full. The next moment there's only the main characters' cars in the parking lot. Do they show up late and leave latest for a reason? Is it connected to the important work they're doing and the important works in parentheses mm. uh, in quotes uh, they are doing in MDR? So, yeah, I mean, it definitely is interesting that they keep selling at least my perception of this whole you know work procedure where you you have your work life that you leave your work life at work and then you have your outer life you would think they would still think boy am i working longer than everybody else because everybody else is gone by the time i'm leaving the building you would think i know they stagger them a little bit and maybe yeah. they're staggering them a little bit later but at the same time it's like you leave in very last that's a little bit of, maybe that's just part of their contract and they're just not getting that into uh they don't no. get into that in the show but do you have any thoughts on that like you know it's very Everybody's interesting right because the um <clears throat> there's the the lexington files or that that little ebook that they did the P, yeah and uh, um, do you want to talk about that just in case people aren't familiar with what that is apple just also put out an ebook, e-book. Yeah. i guess you can say it's just a catalog of emails it's like a investigator getting information through emails and stuff like that and it follows another character who is actually in mdr and um, it's she starts to put to, it's spoilers just in case if you don't want to know about <laughs> this. I I mean you can skip this. I have no long help. I yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Okay, yes, <laughs> the Lexington files. Um, I also I believe that's the title. I may be butchering it too because I think it was just off the top of my head. And uh, basically she would start to correlate when something bad would happen to the time that she would punch it in because she learned how to communicate to her any using wow this is like i'm this is gonna be a lot of explaining but anyway you know <sighs> if you want us to go over that let us know because I, I would be down to do a discussion on that but but basically maybe because of what their work that they're doing maybe it's something that has to do with another part of the world or something like that where codes have to be implemented by a certain time for in order for a function to happen maybe their hours are different I don't know. <laughs> That's all I have to say. But or maybe it's an illusion that people work there. It's my illusion. I was kidding. <laughs> no, but I mean, I it, feel like Lumen's like it's like where everyone works. Like if that factory goes out of business, the town goes out of business. <laughs> yeah, it seems like people are living next to each other. You going to work right now? Yeah, you know, I'll see you there. I, I. Yeah, you know what? It's uh, it's. In, I mean, maybe we're not supposed to think about it that much, but they've gone out mm. of their way to show us with the parking lot full. And then I'll, there's a number of times they've been leaving where the parking lot's empty. You yeah. would imagine that they would show that for a reason. Um, but maybe it's just, yeah, they're leaving work and I, maybe there's not much more into it. I mean, this is one of those fun shows, shows where they give us things to think into, but maybe certain things we're thinking into more than we should yeah. be. But uh, it is interesting it's a that good point, you, though. you would think that they would just be regular workers. And they'd be released when everybody else was aside from a slight, you know, yeah. like off <laughs> offset. But yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Just like the Flintstones, right? Yabba, yabba, dude. He slides down the yeah. dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. In the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Unlike the song for the Flintstones, these people in Severance program are not having a gay old time. They definitely are not. Yeah. Severance, get your brain split in, in two. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So, damn it, Bobby says, that is the name. I didn't say that. Damn it, Bobby says, what's the deal with Mark S. in a red jumpsuit? Yeah. The, you got to love the red jumpsuits. In, yeah. They're always hilarious. But in the opening <laughs> in intro, right? His, his um, Audi's wearing red. So, it's very interesting. Like, is that... Because of outer range, you know, yellow is associated with the cult, and she's also wearing a red jumpsuit in in her crazy moment where she's like psyching herself out. But in the bathroom, she's wearing a red jumpsuit. But it just maybe really different show. But yes, you can check that yes. Out if you, want, if yes. you guys want, yeah. Anyways, but um, but yeah, maybe it has something to do with who he is, or maybe it's a spoiler, not a spoiler, but something to come. Maybe, maybe the red jumpsuit's gonna apply something or. Something like that, too. I honestly think it's just visually for the intro. He makes him stand out differently. But mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's kind of fun. Like one of my favorite things with movies, not so much now because they do 
more photo based uh, movie posters now, but I used to love the illustrated painted movie posters they used to have. Mm. And I think the, the newer version of that in media based stuff is the opening intros for these, oh. these streaming shows we're getting. And, uh, you know, they do some really great storytelling in those. Like you would see shows like Westworld mm. or Game of Thrones where the opening changes based on what is going on in the show. So there's subtle, you have to kind of know what's going on or you happen to be going back and watching the show again. And you're like, oh, they were giving us clues to what was going on even as as you know subliminal or you know abstract as it was yeah. there would be things going on there so there is a possibility the red jumpsuit might mean something in that mm -hmm. opening or you know whatever else oh, you know in the show that's happening but we might not know exactly what it's corresponding yeah. to uh, at present time yeah, yeah and if you guys are read up on his dark materials there's a lot of spoilers in their opening but anyways we're gonna <laughs> yeah, we're gonna continue <laughs> All right, so Solo, Solo Saga says, I think the word scanners aren't real. In the Lexington letter, mm. Peg takes a coded note on a receipt yeah. from a store with presumably regular writing on it. She also took this in after they were upgraded and then came back 10 minutes later with another note. Not to mention, Milchek would have known that Dylan didn't take the card home if the scanners are real or at the very least nowhere near as good as they act like they are. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like this is a really dumb example, but you can get these kind of uh, gated shock collars for dogs to where if they're going to walk into like a, mm. a, say like a garden area, they'll get a little shock. And once they're trained to do that, even once you take the collar off of them or you mm. turn off the, the gate, they still won't go in there because they're kind of conditioned or trained to not. To, we've never yeah. done that to our dogs, by the way. Don't send us hate mail. But, you know, like it's kind of almost a conditioning that the fear or the concern of that, mm. of the repercussions will stop you from doing that. No, so that's a really good point. You know, that really obviously is. we don't know the, obviously we don't know the background of if they've been <laughs> called on that before, but I'm curious to see if. Yeah. You know, what's interesting too. I, there's a, there was a similar study done on monkeys where they had a ladder with, with um, bananas on the top and, they the group went up and they splashed water on them when they try to get the banana and then the monkeys freaked <laughs> oh. out right so what they did was they they didn't climb the ladder because they knew if they climbed the ladder they would get splashed with water so they took out one of the monkeys and they put in a new monkey and the monkey started to climb the ladder for the banana and all the other monkeys stopped him they like literally like oh, beat wow. him up like don't don't do that man don't do that <laughs> and then later on that monkey would just stop the other monkeys because the other monkeys stopped him even though they know they weren't going to oh, splash any water on them so it's like and that's kind of what we're getting here almost with the employees is, oh you can't you can't do that it's it's already been tried ah. like because you know what i mean because it's like been passed down kind of by by so word it's just of a mouth. cultural thing almost yeah it's a it's a in this case it's a work yeah. culture but it's almost like a just a any type of culture type yeah. thing like an intelligent culture things are passed on. that's really cool that's a good example yeah. as well which i haven't heard that well, about that before. it, it just cool. it, it's the same as yours except for it's like the once they learn they're stopping other people <laughs> yeah that's really cool that's really neat, that's really neat. but that only came into my head john because you mentioned the dog collar <laughs> <laughs> but um there was also something else i wanted to mention with it. oh so the the lexington letter letters that's what we were talking about earlier um the the character um peggy i believe was it her name peggy yes or peg she has like this childlike language that's like coded that she was able to send me messages out so yeah maybe and um, again this is Halliar would would be able to do it if mark never stopped her <laughs> And again, this is all relating back to the kind of uh, world building mm -hmm. supplemental PDF that Apple had released that you guys can certainly yes. check out, uh, which is, you know, that's what that referencing to. All right. So we have D white man. Uh, so clever. Welcome D back. white man <laughs> says, yeah. So I've noticed that Dylan does have a wife because the shoes behind him, when we get to see him on the outside are women's shoes. And also mm. if Milicek was with him and the other guy was operating the overtime procedure, I forget his name, the security guy, then oh. who helped him flip the switches because it takes two people? Mistake, do you think? <laughs> Bert. Hmm. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> um, the security guard's name was was Garner, right? I think his yeah, name I think, was yeah, it was Garner. Yeah, <clears throat> Garner's dead now. Poor guy. Garner nah, got nah, nah, garnered. Nah. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. Okay. Anyway, sorry about that little yeah. song breakup. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we definitely, I forgot where it was. We definitely saw, was it him that I he mean, was going through the house? Dylan's he, he short compared she, to him, yeah. the, 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 the security guard. I feel like the security uh -huh. guard would be able to do that. The only thing is, I guess he's just waiting on the, the, the walkie talkie that they had. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it could have been a, one of those other cars in the parking lot. Like we talked about earlier, <laughs> there was like, there's like hundreds of cars in the parking lot. So, <laughs> 
I mean, it it does. Uh, I think, uh, I can't, boy, it's who it's would been be a in on it though? Because it sounded like Milchek was trying to do something without getting caught. Because like even even yeah. when they came back though, right? So the security guard would be in on it, or whoever it was is in on it with Milchek. So who knows? Who maybe he brought up someone from the other elevator. Maybe it was like a Miss Casey or something that he had do that because it's one of those mm-hmm. things like you bring them up for a task. You're like, you're going to do this and you're going to stop and then you're going to go back down the elevator kind of thing. So maybe it was a, a part time any that helped him out. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I wish I had like, one. You're but... just nodding your head like Nick's yeah, crazy, Nick's I, crazy, Nick's well, crazy. I mean... <laughs> The first part, as far as, you know, Dylan having a wife, I think, you know, we definitely did get views of multiple yes. pairs of shoes and there was definitely a women kid. shoes. So it would make sense that Dylan would have a wife or, you know, have a family and things like that. Yeah. So I think that part definitely does make sense. Um, but who is his wife? Yeah. So <laughs> beyond that, I'm not sure about, you know, the, the operation and things like that. So uh, next we have Adam Dunn uh, saying. Please tell, uh, please tell you guys are going to start doing reviews for Outer Range. So. Obviously, this was a while back, but we did do Outer Range, and yes. we did uh, enjoy that, and that is now, unfortunately, behind us as well, because that uh, wrapped up very quickly. We got in near the end of the season, but it was a, it was a fun one to cover, and yes. uh, now we're doing some comment videos and theories and stuff for that as well. So you can definitely check out that stuff, and uh, we'll obviously have some more coming on that as well. Mm-hmm. All right, so Jeremy Grimsley says, it's a cool last name, by the way, really if cool. I said it right, especially, uh, what, every, uh, what every episode of season two focuses on, the different protocols being used on the refiners. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Like each, yeah, that each would episode, be that, well, that would be cool, but I feel like they're not going to do that. I feel like they, they're going to keep what's going on where it's like you have your inside world and your, out, your outside world, and I think... Honestly, I think Mark S is going to try to get the chip out in the next season. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be like one of his main goals. And what's cool about that, too, is he, if he does get the chip out, then his minds will be intertwined. So he'll be able to have both memories and it'll be fun to see him be able to walk in and out of Lumen without having to <laughs> like switch on and off. How's it look again? <laughs> I my camera can't do that zoom awesome zoom focus oh it's so sick that shot <laughs> what do you think they're yeah, doing on that shot you think it's like a 600 to like a to like a 30 or something like that because the way it um, zooms in and focuses it, is very I think it impressive. might be the, the that jaw shot where they're actually doing the zoom lens and moving the camera yeah. at the same time oh, okay because you can definitely tell like you are you're at like a wider lens to a more of a like a mm-hmm. yeah but anyways yeah. It's such yeah. a cool shot <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> yeah it's a really cool effect it, 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 it's really, really good. And the acting sells it too, the way they do the, the kind of the freaking out Much stuff. better yeah. than me. Huh? I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that actually. All right. So, um, every time, every yeah, you morning. know what? I, I like the idea that maybe somewhere down the road, we're going to see some of those other modes just because uh, us as a, as a community, you know, all of you in the, in the comments and everything. Yeah. And Nick and I, we've had fun nerding out on what we think all those do. But at the same time, I, I, imagine maybe sometime in season two or maybe season three or whatever it might be we'll see another one we'll say yes elephant mode or whatever it is and we'll get to freak out i knew it i knew i knew it i knew it you know we'll be like that but aside from that i don't think it's something we're going to see very often but it'll be fun if we do get to see uh some of that it would be hilarious like like i'm I'm very curious because you feel like it's so open-ended with these titles you can do so much with them. yeah all right, I'm not sure if I can say it. Symphy we symphy. We. All right, I'm just gonna s- spell this skull one out. Skull and bones. This, this comes icon. from skull and bone uh, <laughs> icon. S i m p h i w e. Symphy we. Symphy we. Humna. All right, the don't remember each other makes it not possible that she is a clone. Milchek would have said he doesn't remember her. What is he, what are we referring okay, to so here? Okay, we're, so we're talking about Miss Miss Casey. Yeah. And then the clone thing here. So, so, um, <clears throat> so I think it makes it not possible it's a clone because Milchek was like, he doesn't remember her. Because remember, like one of the theories, like, is she a clone or is, you know, is she in a coma yeah. or all this stuff? So I think he's just basically debunking the whole clone. Well, why would that make it to where she's not a clone if he doesn't remember her? I don't know. 
If it's, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm trying, All right, well, I'm trying to explain. I don't know things. if that helped very much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we might be taking this out of context and we not probably are. understanding the statement very well. But uh, you know what? If any, anything else, you guys got entertainment. I'm trying to say that name. <laughs> That's so why I that put was it up well there. worth it. <laughs> you know, yeah, thanks a lot, jerk. All right, so we have MC. We went from the hardest name for me to try and say to MC. No, so it's pronounced you, MC. MC. No, it's not. <laughs> M- yeah. All right, see, so. <laughs> So this is actually on the different programs uh, for mm. the yes the settings. So I am thinking the programs are elephant. Go back to having some memories? Question mm. mark. Maybe of their childhood? Question mark. Like As that. it's said, elephants have a good memory. Mm-hmm. Goldfish erases m- recent memories. Mm. Clean slate. Wipe the in his memory. Lullaby. Create new memories while they are sleeping. Open house. Put someone else's memories or consciousness into someone with a chip. Oh. So yeah. So those this, are fun. Yeah, this gets to go into that realm of really fun speculation. And I I bet they must have had fun sitting down and coming up with this stuff. Like, all right, we're going to put this stuff in here. I wonder how many people are going to notice this. I wonder if people are going to sit down and debate what these things mean. Like that must be some of the fun stuff for writers and people that do this type of, you know, thing for for a series like this. Look at us. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we have Ryan. Am I the only one who noticed the voice of the board was Mark? Ah, see, like, <clears throat> I didn't notice that. I'm curious if anyone else did. I just wanted to bring that here because if that's something we missed, I wanted to to send it out to you guys to see if you can catch that for us. But yeah. I, I didn't know because it's so, like, <clears throat> now. <clears throat> and it's so interesting, too, because you can clearly hear it's Mark at the beginning. It's like, <clears throat> hello. Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, so... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That'd be interesting. To see. All right, so we have Garrett Young says, honestly, I can totally see the second season starting out with a completely different cast Ooh. or department, if you will. Then towards the middle of the season, have the two come together. I could see them doing that. Yeah, you know what? I, I read this comment. Uh, Nick and I haven't talked about this, so I'm going to be interested. Actually, do you want to start? No, go for it. Your... You are on a roll, buddy. Go, go, go. Yeah, right, right well, there. You're, was... like, oh, oh. You're like, I'm not ready. Yeah. <laughs> I was say, I mean, I could see that being kind of a fun, fun thing to do. Like, mm. well. It can be very alienating for an audience if you're not getting the people you're used to seeing and you can lose an audience pretty quickly if that happens. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're going to introduce new people into the show, having it be a very curious thing where you're like, oh, who are these people? Oh, we're throwing in this situation with them. And then that, that seems uh. like it could be a natural way to bring them together because, I mean, I think the reason that uh, Garrett is saying this is, you know, we're left in a very weird state at the end of season one towards like, all right, they can't just bring him in for work the next day, you know, because they're any selves know a lot of weird stuff. And his sister won't let him in. Yeah. And they've plotted all kinds of weird stuff. The, the outer, you know, Audi world with the sister and everything, you know, that's been set up too. I mean, unless again, you know, the sister and her family and everything, everybody's in danger, depending on how, you know, evil lumen really is then how are we going to go back to a normal maybe we'll see those other modes <laughs> yeah, good yeah that's a great that's a great example yeah i mean they totally could flip the switch and i mean it's been clear that they have overstepped the bounds of what they established in pr yeah. you know to the public on what they're going to use you know this severance procedure for and so I guess at any point they could completely change, mm. you know, their memories for the any and or the Audi mm, uh, and, and make that be what they want it to be. So that, that's a very interesting point. So yeah. the way this could work, I hate I would hate to bring up loss again, but spoilers just in case you have if you haven't watched loss. But right after, you know, you meet the, the front half of the plane. That's what we're, we're with at first. Right. The back half of the planes on some other side of the island. And what they do is they. Like season two, I think, or something like that, they re reconnect and they start with the backside of the plane and then they meet up with the other group. So it's totally possible to start somewhere and you still cut back to Mark S and everything else going on. But you can introduce a brand new person or something in a different <clears throat> in a different, you know, com- yeah. not company, but, you know, different job title or something like that. And <clears throat> it can cross paths. You know, that being said, though, I feel like we already have enough people that we're following. Yeah. I mean, we already have people Four. that we think we're gone. Like Christopher Walken, I, I don't want to lose the Walken, you know. But oh, he's, yeah. He's, he's not in the workplace anymore, Bert. but he's still out there. And so if we start, you know, introducing too many people, that's when I feel like we start losing, you know, connection to these people. So 
I, I could totally see what Garrett's saying uh, happen, uh, but at the same time, it would be interesting to see if they mm. could juggle all that and have it turn out mm. effectively and have, a, have as, as strong connections to yeah. the characters as they do that. So it'll be curious to see. All right, so we have uh, Elijah Last saying, what if Miss Casey wanted to leave Mark? But this was the only way she thought she could, or was a genuine crash? They saved her and then severed uh, her, or they planned planned it. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? Totally possible. I mean, what if we don't know her true background, how she's even connected to the the company or whatever, and maybe it was one of those things like a way of saving Mark was to sacrifice herself. By even if it was faking the crash or going through with it, that's a total possibility because we don't know. We really don't know what her, what got her there, right? We we know there was a car accident, and we know Lumen is highly connected to car accidents, especially after reading the the, the Lexington papers. So ah, it can go both ways at this point. And what's cool is the writers have options, and it can lead to the story we're already telling yeah. at this point. Yeah, I mean, I this is something that I mean, this is such a recent reveal about her that we don't really, I guess, have enough to go on on what. Well, I guess we 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 know what happened. There was a car accident. We have no hints of yeah. what happened there other than that. So I mean, it's all speculation, and we obviously don't have any more information other on that either. And she's only technically been alive as an any for sixteen hours or something like that, right? She, she, Ooh, she, I completely she, forgot. She, there was something like that. Like, she's like, I've only been out for 16 hours or something like like total, like her life as any. So she just would come out for the health sessions where she would just basically say like, John, your, your Audi loves to go on walks. <laughs> oh, I do. Tell me more. Please 10 points reducted. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite scenes when Bert's like, or what, what's his name? Uh, Irving. Irving. He's like, really? Oh, yeah. oh. he's like a uh, 10 points. He's like, <laughs> Yeah, John, He's so you're the good. best VR game player out there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> John, you're loved uh, by all your neighbors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so That's how we should all start right. off all of our videos now. <laughs> Just like yeah, <laughs> these, with these awesome words of affirmations. <laughs> for us. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> All right, let's see. So last but not least, we have, sorry, this is at the bottom of the list. That's why I'm looking down here. Let's see. So we have Billy Go Whoop. That's an awesome name, by the way. (laughs) Billy Go Whoop says, my guess as to the numbers Mm. and what MDR does is that they're perhaps training some kind of emotional AI. Mm. Lumen is trying to make an AI that can intuit human emotions and has determined that the four base emotions they're looking for can be put together to make any emotional state. Or maybe they're trying to revive a digital version of one of Lumen CEOs. Perhaps this person's consciousness has somehow been downloaded in digital form and the refiners are meant to decode all the raw data in emotional states. That's, That's obviously a, a harder core theory, but I have no idea on that one. I mean, you know what the, 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 the most abstract thing that's going on is like what the work they're doing is. I mean, deck. Yeah. Yeah. But I have no idea. Something I just thought of that can go to this, John, when, um, when Halle R finishes and she gets 100% and you know, it's like the Egan founder or whatever. And he's like, I love you. He said like, I love you to Halle R, which if it is an AI and it's starting to relearn emotions and stuff, what if he's able to connect? That's his granddaughter. And he's like, I love you. I'm, I'm, I said it like, like home alone. I love you. <laughs> Do you remember that part when he's like, "Get on your knees and tell me you love me"? And okay, never mind. <laughs> Do you not remember that? We love you. No, okay. <laughs> but, uh, you're but, saying really creeper style. I've no I'm idea. just saying it was super weird that the game program said "I love you" to Haliar, which was really weird. Like, um, "I love you." Don't you think that's weird to say? To like, me, it's just a really culty thing. I mean, uh, okay. when 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 there's a cult going on. They try and make you feel loved and you're part of this community and what you're doing is so important. We're so happy to have mm. you. And, you know, so to me, that's what I interpreted as. I don't know if that's what they meant, but the, to me, that's just what it came across mm. as. But I have no idea. I mean, the biggest thing to me that's been, again, this is not, you know, kind of looking at the, the Lexington, you know, kind of supplemental thing is that, okay, what is the work they do actually contribute to? Is mm. there an important thing? Is it on a grand scale outside or is it just internal? Um, you know, from, from the PDF, the Apple PDF, it makes it sound like it has some importance outside. But here, mm. you know, Billy Go Whoop, again, Billy awesome Go Whoop. is suggesting that there may be <laughs> 
to something more uh, kind of programmable yes. or, or a machine learning type thing going about it, which yes. can be interesting as well. Yes. Yeah. And guys, thank you so much for commenting. We love this. Recently, we tried doing a live stream for the first time. It was so much fun just interacting with you guys and talking and commenting. And also, just so you guys know, we have some Audi shirts. If you're interested <laughs> in the show, if you like the show, and if you are an Audi, feel free free and proud to wear this out <laughs> that was you know what it was cheesy but it was well executed well done nicholas well done thank you sir <laughs> yeah you don't have to go down the black elevator today okay oh thank you <laughs> well oh, done. thank goodness yeah you get to play with the baby goats all right well done well done <laughs> <laughs> okay that was a baby goat sound right yeah, it was. All right. You hairy like goat. All right. So, you guys, <laughs> check out azarp.space for all the audio and video links. We're going to be doing more comments. We're going to be doing more crazy theories. And this is not the only show we do. This is, We've done this quite a bit with Raised by Wolves. We'll be continuing yes. on that. And we did this with Outer, Outer, Outer Range. Outer Range as well. So check out all those different sci-fi shows. And we're going to be covering a lot of other things upcoming as well. So check out those polls uh, if you want to kind of get a general idea on what we're going to be covering in that live stream that Nick mentioned near the end. We kind of gave a general announcement on what's going to be coming up for us and shows that we have our eyes on. But we're always up for getting suggestions as well. If you suggest it, we'll probably put it on a list. Doesn't mean 100% we're going to watch it, but it's we found our list. way to Severance <laughs> and Outer Range and all these other things. We found our way to those because of you all. So we thank you very much. Check out azart.space for all the audio and video links, and we'll see you on the next Azart. Stay away from Black Elder. Any. Audi. Any. Any. Audi. Audi. Woo! That was pretty good.